Subject, Rear Admiral Thomas Hahn. Species, Human. Description, Mammalian humanoid, no tail, 6, 2 inches, 1.87 meters. Average height, 185 pounds, 84 kilograms. Average weight, 170 year life expectancy. Ship, USSS Doom. Location, Saul. Fire, I ordered, firing eye. Thanks to our early warning system, we'd been anticipating this attack from the Omni Union. The giant glob flying through warp in our direction had been bigger than any of their previous attacks, but all of their attacks had been bigger than the ones previous. I had worried that they may send a mobile prime platform after Saul, but I was wrong. They'd sent five. The MPPs exited warp near Jupiter, and we fired at the same moment that the USSS Margraven did. We managed to kill two of them before they were able to get firing solution on us. It struck me how much effort it is going to take to clean these things up. I hope that their gravity doesn't fuck the system up too bad. Recharging, sir, Commander Ernest reported. Fire when ready. Evasive maneuvers, Nguyen. Aye, aye, sir, Nguyen said. The majority of our support fleet was fighting the ships the MPPs had brought with them. The remaining three mobile prime platforms turned their attention toward us. Nguyen faced our bow toward them and began using our thrusters to dodge volleys as best he could. For every shot that their powerful Max managed to strike us with, ten missed. Time's ticking, Captain. Reach out to our support and have them start targeting Max on this MPP, I said, highlighting the third surviving MPP. Aye, aye. Gibbon shouted as he set about the task. Even if we survive to fire another shot, that third MPP is going to be a problem. The age-old conundrum of two guns, three targets. In times past, one would simply try to line the targets up and fire through the first into the second, but that won't work here. The A1 needs to detonate within the MPP to destroy it. A through and through likely wouldn't do enough damage. As such, it behooves us to limit the amount of damage that the MPP can do, and the best way to do this is by taking out as many of its weapons as possible. Unfortunately, the weapons in question are Max that can destroy most of our ships in a single shot, so the ships we send on this mission have a high chance of not coming back. Sir, the support fleet is only able to send a handful to the MPP, Captain Gibbons said. What? I asked incredulously. Why? The Omni Union ship's in system are making a run for Earth and the colonies, sir, John said as his avatar appeared next to my seat. They're also using more advanced tactics than they previously were, and have accounted for our in system warping capabilities with broad firing lanes and covering fire. They outnumber us and are watching each other's backs, so there aren't many of our ships that aren't being swarmed right now. How many are being sent? I asked, almost not wanting to know. Twenty, the AI replied. Twenty ships versus more than six hundred cannons. I tried to remain stoic as I watched our shields dwindle. We would be able to take out two of the remaining MPPs, but the third may spell our doom. I chuckled darkly at the irony of being doomed on the USSS Doom. Then I had a moment of clarity and I realized how we could stack our odds a bit. Ernest, give Nguyen the info he needs to give our Max a firing solution on this MPP's cannons, I ordered. The more of its Max we take out, the better our odds of survival. Aye, sir, he shouted. I looked back at our tack map. The 20 ships that second fleet had managed to send were doing their best. I watched our guns change targets and send a volley as well. 20 seconds. We need to do as much damage as we can. John, what do you suppose the odds are that we pull this off? I asked quietly. Doesn't matter. We will pull this off because that's what we were ordered to do, sir, the AI replied. John had taken over for Omega aboard the ship when we were assigned to the defense of Seoul. In many ways, it was a welcome change of pace. While I enjoyed Omega's humor, I never could tell if it outranked me or not, and that made things awkward. 
I definitely outrank John, though. The downside of John is that it is far too military-minded and seemingly has no sense of humor. Or maybe its humor is so damn dry that you can't tell if it's joking or not. Hell, that last line was something a caricature of a war hero would say. If John hadn't been so deadpan when it said that, I would have actually laughed. My thoughts on John's sense of humor, or lack thereof, almost served to distract me from our diminishing shields, down to 25%. My hand cramped and I realized I had been white-knuckling my armrest. I eased my grip and continued studying the tack map. I almost winced as two of the 20 ships disappeared from the tack map. I opened the casualty notifications and saw it was the USS Macedonia and the USS Yergif who had been taken out. Battleships, which have a much harder time evading than the smaller ships in the fleet. Firing Ultramac, Ernest shouted. My heart leapt as the round sailed through the vastness of space and impacted the intended target. Good hit. Recharge and fire at will. One more shot, I said. The USSS Margraven joined us and the 18 other ships to begin taking out the MAX on the one remaining Mobile Prime platform. We just had to hold out for one minute. If the MPP couldn't kill us both in the next minute, it would be destroyed. It was dividing its focus between us and the smaller ships, firing as fast as it could. Keep up our evasion as best you can, Nguyen, I said. Aye, sir. Guyen was doing a damn good job. I used to pilot a beast like this so I know full well how impossible of a task it is to get it to move evasively. Commander Nguyen seems to be blissfully unaware of this impossibility because he's managing it so well that it's making me doubt my own piloting abilities. The question is whether or not it will be enough. Two more ships disappeared off of the tack map. The USSS Harmony, a frigate, and the USS Sivrenol, a destroyer. If we make it through this, I'm going to personally recommend medals for each of the crew aboard these ships. It will take quite a while to submit the paperwork for 20 crews, but I'll use my vacation to make it so. My wife will forgive me. As the seconds ticked by, our shields continued to drop and more and more of our ships were destroyed. The USS Revenger was next, followed rapidly by the USS Macbeth, the USS Bolyavros, and the USS Longmarch. The USS Red Dragon, the USS Onami, the USS Glaive, and the USS Neptune met a similar fate soon after. The remaining eight ships were all destroyers. Looks like we're having an effect, Gibbon said calmly. I gave him a look of confusion and then checked our shields. We were down to 8%, but the rate of decline had slowed significantly. 8%, 30 seconds, and four support ships remaining. The USSS Haverthon, the USSS Eradicator, the USSS Yistri, and the USS Alpha Centauri had been destroyed. The remaining four ships were the USSS Tunchu, the USSS Solar Winds, the USSS War Spirit, and the USSS Liberty. The Liberty was the only one of the four that wasn't warping. It had opted for a mobile orbital bombardment tactic that seemed to be working quite well. It was flying just above the MPP's gravitational point of no return and blasting its max as it went. This confused me for a moment because it meant its deck max weren't in use, but then I noticed that the icon was shifting in an odd way. I highlighted the icon and realized that the ship was spinning making use of all of its max and sustaining a continuous rate of fire. I tried not to wince. The forces involved in that maneuver were going to play hell on the Liberty systems. If they survive, the Liberty's engineers are going to one hell of a time repairing it. Might end up being the first time in history that engineering stages a mutiny. 10 seconds, John began counting down as our shields finally gave up the ghost. Nine. Eight, seven, it said, as a Mac round tore through our hull, missing anything vital. Sealing bulkheads, Gibbon shouted. Four, three, two. Another round tore through us, disabling one of our aft engines. One, charged. Firing, Ernest shouted. We fired. 
and I watched our projectile make its way toward the MPP. I checked on the Margraven and realized its Ultra Mac had been hit. Our shot was our only hope. We all held our breath as more Mac rounds pounded into our hull. Successful hit, John informed us. Take us out of its range, Nguyen, I ordered. Aye, aye, sir. We hadn't taken critical damage yet, and we weren't about to let the bastard take us down with it. Nguyen expertly fired our thrusters to turn us about and to get us started in the direction we needed to go, turning tail and running from the Mac rounds chasing us. I watched our four remaining support ships disappear from the tac 